Hello everyone, this is Wolosiak. Ray tracing, ray tracing, ray tracing. For years, humanity has craved having slightly better graphics at the cost of also having three frames a minute. Just look at these graphics. Wow. Truly magnificent. But wait a minute. Firstly, what is ray tracing? Well, ray tracing is a graphics rendering technique that is used to create high quality realistic visuals by casting rays from and true geometry and displaying the output of the ray onto the screen. Think of how rays of light hit a grassy field and your eye perceives that through the light input. Ray tracing is a similar concept to that. And this is very simplified and there's actually a lot more to it, but for the sake of this video, this is kind of like the gist of it. Obviously, lighting is way more realistic when you're seeing ray tracing, but we get to a conundrum here. You know what doesn't have ray tracing? Exactly, Minecraft. Exactly, the most popular game ever made has no ray tracing. But we can fix that. Or at least that was my thought process when I decided to make this video at 5 in the morning. Okay, first of all, let's lay out how we want to do this. Firstly, I want to make this completely separate from the vanilla lighting system. This makes it so my work isn't overly complex and just generally makes it easier for me. Secondly, I want to make it voxelized. Voxelized? Voxel based? Whatever. It's going to be made of cubes is what I'm, I'm trying to say, really. I'm doing this because one, I feel like it stylistically looks better for vanilla Minecraft. And two, it's easier for my machine to compute and not instantly explode. And three, I'm lazy. And this is way easier than making a highly complex new lighting engine that 100% simulates real ray faced shadows and lighting specifically for the purpose of this video. Alright, finally for a plan, I wanted to get the help of my friend Rowdy. This is because one, I'm lazy, and two, they were conveniently online when I had the idea for this video. So now that we have our plan laid out and the help of uh, Rowdy, I wanted to discuss with them how I wanted to go about this. So how do I want to go about this? Well, let's look at the bright side of things. The sun! The sun is going to be our starting point for this project uh, since it's the main source of light that any world has and it's an easy anchor point. You'll notice that while in vanilla, the sun is able to give off light, but there aren't really any shadows. So the first thing we thought of doing was to create a system for displaying shadows. Shadows are basically the antithesis of light, uh, or rather they are simply an absence or lack of light. So for this, we're going to find where the sun is, get where the sun is facing, create a ray from the sun's face, then find out where this ray intersects with blocks. And then using the same position and rotation of the sun, display shadows on the block where the ray does not hit. There's still one small issue with this, however. Shadows wouldn't realistically always be one block in length. Let's say you were out camping in the middle of an open field, right? You set up a tent. It has a closed off ceiling part and a closed off wall part on one of its sides. If the sun is directly upwards above your tent, the shadow cast by the tent will be about a full tent size on the ground. However, if the sun is setting and it is right above the horizon, the shadow cast by the tent is going to be bigger than the actual perceived size of the tent. So our shadow naturally needs to morph in size in regards to our light source. In this case, we're using the sun. Okay, this is the structure for our shadow casting. Let's figure out how to do this step by step. How do we get the position of the sun at all times? Well, firstly, we know the rotation of the sun around the Minecraft world is a perfect circle, so we can just easily plot out the circle and get the location of the center point and wait wait a minute believe it or not the sun doesn't actually do a perfect circle rotation across the minecraft world so okay scrap that we need a formula for this mess luckily we have the power to do nothing and just have someone else do the work for us what i'm really trying to say is that someone already has figured out this problem and i just borrowed their formula using this formula we can plug in our values for the current time then use some vector math to see where the sun is facing and done we completed our first step and we know where our ray needs to be now now for the second step. For this, we're going to want to create a ray that extends from the sun up until our world. When doing this, Rowdy suggested I use an optimized method to traverse voxels or whatever. Me being a genius and at this point being awake for over 48 hours, I suggested that he should take his optimization talks elsewhere. In this household, we actually create our code with duct tape and prayers. Anyways, I ended up creating a dumbed down version of the exact same system he was talking about. Basically, the game will just detect place blocks, then check if they are hit by the sun by going through the blocks leading to the sun. Then, if this is validated, the game can actually allow for the creation and management of a shadow. Now, we can tell the game to continue this ray, except now we are going to store a ray from the bottommost extremity of the block, in accordance with the position of the sun, of course. This is done so that we can create our shadow. We can expand it upwards depending on the length that we need our shadow to be. Now, for our shadows, we can just have ID shapes for each type of shadow we're going to want so for example a simple floor shadow can have an id of zero a shadow that covers the floor and the south wall can have
have an ID of 1, and so on and so forth. Now that we have our shadow, we also need to resize it to morph it accordingly. Remember the whole tent example that we talked about? For this, we can simply have a value that gets saved onto the ray that tells you how big the shadow has to be. Since blocks cannot really get closer or farther from the sun in the game, the sizes of shadows are solely determined by the time of day. Since, for example, a shadow cast at midday, then when the sun is around the top of the blocks, will be smaller than the shadow cast during a sunset or sunrise, when the sun is at the horizon and its light is hitting the side of the blocks. Alright, now usually you would think that we can just use an equation to translate the current time of day into how many blocks the shadow length needs to be, but we can actually use a technique here called not being dumb. This technique usually involves using a major component in the human body called the brain. Because our shadows are one block by one block in size, we don't really need that much precision for the size, which means we can simplify how we get the size or so our computer doesn't explode as much, I mean. For this, we can use what is called a lookup table. You can think of lookup tables as indexes in a book. Let's say you pick up a book about science, right? But really, you just want to learn about chemistry. You can simply just go to the index page, look for chemistry, and see what page that chapter is on. You can just easily turn to that page and continue reading. Lookup tables do the exact same thing, except you are the computer, and instead of looking for chapters about science, it can be, say, random words, objects, or in our case, values and numbers. And instead of page numbers, we can assign it to look for the number that signifies the size of our shadow. So our game is going to look at our index, see that the current time of day is midday, then see that midday corresponds to a shadow size number of 1. So we can just use a 1 block long shadow. This method is a lot more optimized than running more calculations for such a simple thing as shadow length. And now, as you can see, as we place blocks, our shadows are created on the ground in relation to the sun. And if we alter the time, we can see that our shadows change accordingly. We can even make little windows here and you'll see that our shadows will reflect the changes we made to the wall. We can make some interesting shapes here as well and as you can see it updates in real time. Unfortunately the system only works for blocks as you can see and oh oh wait sorry I I don't know why my crafting table looks like a creeper. As I was saying the system only works for blocks and entities. So far I've only shown you the process for displaying shadows since we already have light but we can also create some nice lighting showcases with this as well like such. Here, I'm lighting up the campfire and I'm letting the light propagate throughout the world. We can also have some dynamic lighting, allowing us to hold certain items like torches or glowstone to illuminate our surroundings whenever it's dark. We can also use this for some pretty sick lighting features, like making color shadows when the light goes through stained glass. Or we can even simulate water caustics, although it kind of looks like static, let's be honest. Another really cool thing we can do with this is flashlights. So now you can actually play Slenderman inside of Minecraft. This is pretty similar to the dynamic lighting feature, but now we're probably getting light towards where the player is facing. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to comment down below what I should do for my next video. Uh, I read all the comments I get, even though I don't reply to all of them. In my last video got some attention, so instead of telling you to subscribe, I'm going to recommend you uh, go check out some of my friends' channels instead, uh, since they make better content than I could ever make, and I feel like they deserve some love as well. First person on the list, uh, there's Rowdy. They helped me make some of the calculations and logistics of the project. They also did some work on the lookup tables that I talked about earlier, and then proceeded to play Life is Strange for two hours while I was working on the rest of the project. So, thanks Rowdy, very cool. They make some cool building and SMP videos from time to time, go check them out. Second off, we have Lush. He's done some nice videos on a variety of gameplay stuff. Uh, he's very entertaining as well, even though he's British. Next up, we have Matt. He uploads some various speedrunning related videos, we'll definitely check him out if you're into the whole MCSR scene. There's also B, who I've previously brutally squashed with an anvil she also has a sick ass band with some great songs you can listen to they're all great people go check them out this has been willosiak i'll see you whenever i decide to um, upload again okay bye